Hey groups, good to be with you guys all again today. I hope you're enjoying your February um, and it's not too gloom for you, even though all of us are ready for the snow to be done, I think, at this point. Uh, we are jumping into a new series called Distinct, um, and we're going to be working through over the next weeks talking about what that means and how the Israelites are a distinct group of people, and they were meant to be distinct, uh, chosen and different um, than all everybody else. They were distinct in God's eyes. And this week, we looked at the story of Moses. We jumped in the book of Exodus and looked through the story of Moses. And uh, the big thing we saw out of this is that we learned that God delivers his people, right? Continued throughout the Old Testament into the New Testament, we see that there's deliverance in the way God provides for his people. And we saw that Deliverance means to save, to protect, to preserve, and to heal. And all these ways through the story of Moses, we see that coming to life. Um, and this week, we are going to be looking at those different things and how deliverance matters in our life and why and how we should be respond, responding, knowing that we have been delivered by God and by Jesus Christ um, in the New Testament. So, Kids, if you're in the room, uh, there are some kids questions for you guys, leaders and parents. If you want to walk them through those kids questions, engage with them, love on them. And then uh, adults, we're going to be jumping right into groups content. All right, question number one. Last week, we encouraged you to do two different things. One of them was to be quick to forgive others. And the second is to trust that God is in control. How did both of those things go? And for question number two, I want to quick start by reading one of the most famous verses in the Bible, uh, John 3, 16. Uh, many of you may know that one, but we're also going to tuck in verse 17 with it because it's actually the continuation or the, or the response of verse 16. So it says this, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. And this is verse 17. For God did not say Send his son into this world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. And here's the question in this. What do these verses tell you about God? And verse 17 says that God sent, his, sent Jesus into save the world through him. Do you primarily think of Jesus as a savior or are there other ways that you think of Jesus as? All right, for, questions number, for question number three, I want you to first start by reading Exodus 1, 1 through 7, and then we'll ask some questions. Part one in question three, the book of Exodus is a continuation of the story of Genesis, right? That we're, that, that's really what this whole next year and a half is about, understanding that this is a story, one whole story. How or what do you notice in these verses that ties those stories together? How do these verses connect to the story that is found in Genesis? Take a few minutes and recount what you've learned so far in Genesis. So Genesis 1 through 50, what stories are in there um, and how do those tie with what is about to come? All right, for number four, start by reading Exodus 2, verse 15 to 17.
All right, question number one in part four, or part one in question four, that's a better way to say it. Who did God use to save the lives of many of the Hebrew children in Egypt? And what made them choose to save the Hebrew children rather than follow the orders of Pharaoh, of that king? All right, for question number five, I want you to do a bit more reading in this again. Exodus 2, 23 through 25 and Genesis 15, 13 to 14. And once you do that, um, take the time to talk about how do those passages correlate, right? And what does this tell you about God? All right, for the last question, read Exodus 12. 21 through 23 and 28 through 31 and then ask uh, and then we'll come back and ask you a few questions out of that okay part a in question six how does God deliver the Israelites from Egypt how are the Israelites covered from the death that passes over all of Egypt? And how is this similar to a story in the gospel in the New Testament? Like, why is this similar to the gospel in the New Testament? All right, and your challenge for this week, take the time this week to reflect on how God has delivered you and what he has delivered you from. All right, groups, thanks for joining in with the content this week again. I hope uh, your conversations are rich and you're just able to bond in a new way. If you've got some extra time and want to take a little bit of a, a deeper step into this, our digging deeper section this week looks how this story of Moses actually correlates really closely with a story about Jesus. Um, and it's out of John 6. So if you've got some time and want to spend some time there, uh, it's there's some really good stuff in there that you want to take note of. Otherwise, um, I believe next week uh, we have off because of a leader training. We'll still send some content out if you'd like to go through some questions and you just dive into this a little bit deeper. Uh, but leaders are um, off next week because of our leader training training on Sunday coming up. So super excited for that. We're going to talk about some serving things and groups. You'll know about that shortly after that. So I hope you guys are having a great um, late winter, early spring, whatever we're looking at right now. Um, and we will see you guys again soon.